and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. It's a little short one we've got it's here. It's mini spoiler-free movie review. Yes. Uh, it is of everyone's, uh, every gay's new favourite movie. <laughs> oh, you see every gay's new favourite movie. <laughs> I personally love it, but you know I'm yes. not every gay as we know. Yes. I'm not an every gay, you see. Uh, yeah. I don't follow the typical trends, apart from... Oh, Chris seems to love uh, the soundtrack for this. Oh, it's a great soundtrack. Oh, it's a fantastic soundtrack. But we'll get to that. So basically how this review is going to work is Mario's not seen the film, so I can't no, spoil I have it. No, not. So I can't spoil it. So Mario's going to be asking me questions, and I'm going to be answering them as best yes. I can. Yes, yes, yes. And yes, yes. just as a little insight, this... Uh, wait, there, wait there, did we actually see the movie? Oh, well, we're, we're going to get to oh, that. Okay, okay. that. But yes, uh, so this film is fairly recent. It came out... Yes. Not, uh, came well, out a couple of days ago. Within the last week. Yeah, it came out... Last a week. Of, yeah, last week. A couple of... Yeah. Whatever. Uh, so... It's based on a graphic novel. Called I the thought Pol- I was supposed to be asking the fucking questions here. But I'm explaining. Okay. You ask the questions, I explain. Okay. That's the rule. Okay. So, you know. It is based on a graphic novel called The Cold Decide. Yes, which is actually only released in 2012, James. Yes, fairly recent, actually. Uh, which I was, sh- I was shocked at because I didn't know that. Yes. I sat down and it was like, based on the graphic novel, The Cold Decide. And I was like, oh! <laughs> Girl! <laughs> like, uh, so... If you can guess from that, I went to see Atomic Blonde. Yes, yes, yes. Charlie's their own cracking she's actress. She's fucking good in it. Just she can't run away from a big ship role in Prometheus, but you know, other than that, good actress. <laughs> could you? <laughs> <laughs> I would run to the fucking side. <laughs> I'll bitch about her because I could do better. Like, but yes, Atomic Blonde, James. Tell me about this super sexy movie. So Atomic Blonde is a spy thriller, a neon spy thriller. Takes a bit, it, it takes a pace of its own. Like A lot of people do compare it to John Wick uh, because the guy who directed it actually, I think, shadow directed on John Wick. Yes. Because uh, his role was uncredited. I think he was kind of half directing, half not, whenever he could. And people like to compare it to John Wick, like sh- Atomic Blonde as a female John Wick because of the neon colours, the, the the grittiness of it. But I'm actually going to tell you that the two films are actually very, very different. Oh, okay. And even in styles. like People compare it because of the style. Atomic Blonde is trying to capture this time period. You know, it's at the time where the Berlin Wall is going to come down. Yeah. And basically, Theron's character is told, effectively, right, there's a double agent in our ranks, and we need to get this list from... They need so so kind of like the t- first Tom Cruise Mission Impossible? A bit, aye. She's, she's been sent in, but basically how it goes is she, uh, the film opens with her going in to a debrief, and the film is her debriefing. So she's telling the story from her perspective. Oh, so this is how I got here? Yeah, a bit like Deadpool. Yeah. You know, this is how I got here, and then it continues swiftly on. So... Yeah, that's what basically happens, and she's effectively given the story. She's asked about this uh, a comrade of hers that died, a comrade and lover of hers that actually was killed and murdered, and she's been sent in, but she's keeping it to herself that she was a, had a lover to him because they would say, well, you can't do this mission, it's too personal, but she wants a bit of revenge, so she's gone, and... She's basically sent in to find this list that her ex-lover had. Uh, because that list contains information about the double agent and has p- some pretty incriminating evidence on every spy agency in the world. Yeah. So that's why she's there. And when she gets there, she is treated to help from David Percival, who is played by James McAvoy, oh. who is a bit fucking feral <laughs> like, <let's laughs> to, to level with you. He's a guy, they say that he's no exactly for queen and country anymore, but uh, you'd be quite surprised. He's kind of doing what he's doing because he has to. Yeah. And as an added bonus, he quite enjoys it. <laughs> like He enjoys being a bit of a rabid animal. But um, yeah, so those two characters are your two main sort of characters. And the film effectively pins you against, you know, who... You know, it's like, oh, is David Percival the guy that's actually the double agent, or is this person a double agent? And you can never really tell. 
So it really creates this atmosphere of a... Creates a, a good bit of tension. Oh, aye. It creates this whole series where you're, in, you're introduced to all these new characters who are all spies, but one's from, like, one's a French spy, and David is a British spy, and Charlie's there, and she's a British spy. So, you know, it's it's how these characters play off each other, and you're sort of led to go... You're, you're kind of trying to put it in your head. You think... You're sitting saying to yourself, the obvious ca- character would be David Percival. Yeah. And the film does a very, very good job of how it portrays him. And I won't spoil it, but how they how they try to basically distract you from what's happening is very, very interesting. So every character you meet is important. And their main objective becomes to get a gentleman called Spyglass out of Berlin because he's apparently memorised this list and they need that list to basically cover a lot a lot of shady shit. And that's the plot. That's the plot of the story. All right. What I like about it is just I feel invested. I, I'm sitting there for the start going, great, I don't know what's happening. And I felt like that literally up to the last 20 minutes of the film. And then I was like, great. And then... For the last twenty minutes of the film, I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> you know, yeah, it, it's yeah. It's like it's like a slow build payoff. Like instead of giving you everything at the first opportunity, they've held off as long as possible, and then they've given you enough time for that information to settle in, and then travel down the rabbit hole with it in the last act. Mm-hmm. John, the difference I think is John Wick is very action orientated, and Atomic Blonde has its action sequences, and they're very, very good action sequences. How how are the action uh, scenes in this compared to John Wick? Uh, we we spoke uh, at great lengths about John Wick, something we'll need to review down the line. The the action scenes in that I love. It's a kind of wider shot, mm-hmm. whereas everything currently is shot up close. You can't tell who's throwing a punch or whatever. It's very frantic, shaky, always moving. John Wick is taking a step back, focused on the the fighters in the scene, and it's beautiful. I love that. It's a it's something that's n- that's nearly ever used in Hollywood, and John Wick capitalized on that. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a this is this is where it gets a bit interesting because John Wick um, is all action. You know, there's a bit in both films. You know, you get a nice wee half an hour, forty five minutes at the start, and then the action kicks off, and the action very rarely subsides. It stops and takes its pauses, but it's primarily action. But there's a very good story intertwined and woven into it. With Atomic Blonde, it is a lot more story. You're sitting trying to... You're not going to get what's happening unless you get a lot of information. So John Wick is about a story about revenge. Yeah. Primarily, both films, story about revenge. This film is a story about revenge, sort of. She still has a mission to do. She still has a job to do. And she's going to do it. So you, there is a lot of talking in it, but it's a lot of interest in talking. You know, she's going to these lovely, lovely locations. Now, this is in the this is in the middle of the you know this is just before the Berlin Wall's coming down. Yeah. You know, so there's riots everywhere, there's protesting everywhere, and how it sets up Berlin at the time seems to me like you know, it's a dangerous place. People are so filled with anxiety, and this woman has to go about and do her job, and she does. That's something I like. The action sequences in Atomic Blonde are very, very. They are similar, but very, very different. I'll tell you why they're different in a good way. Okay. Some of the scenes are wider angled, so they're not all close up. So you get some, but a lot of it's more. A bit like the raid. You ever seen the raid? No. Big, big fights, big fight sequences. You see it, you see it all. That's what this is like. And there are some bits where you get that close up sort of segment, but a lot of the stuff you see her do, you see her do. Yeah. Like there's a bit when she's in an apartment. She pushes a guy up against the wall and slams the fridge door on his face. You know what I mean, you see that, like you know, it's not covered up or anything. You yeah. see her smack the fridge off his face and his head blasting on the wall. <laughs> like, you know, it's 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 there's a reaction, and it's a very real reaction. You know, she's a woman, and she's going up against all these men, and she kicks ass, 
She she gives every guy she comes across a run for their money in this film, which I think is fantastic. But one thing I really, really like that I noticed, she gets tired. She feels fatigue. John Wick feels fatigue, but it feels like it's just he brushes it off and he gets on with it. You know what I mean? It was more in the second film, you noticed it. And Atomic Blonde, like, she gets into a big scrape, and you see her getting tired, you see her wearing down, you see her not being able to continue, but she still does, because she's yeah. so committed to the job. And I love that. Kind of, uh, kind of like uh, Charlie Cox's Daredevil. Yes. Well, actually, this is another thing, because a lot of her fighting, in comparison to John Wick, is hand-to-hand. She's a hand-to-hand combatant. Most of it is that. She gets a few gunshots, gun scenes, fine. But John Wick is all guns. Yeah. You know, you get a wee bit of haunty horn, a wee bit of fisticuffs just because it's, oh, you know, you might see it. Or a pencil in the throat. Or a pencil in the ear. Yeah. A pencil yeah, in the ear. Yeah, sorry. And that's all great, but um, Atomic Blonde does this really great thing where Charlize Theron is, well, there is parts where she gets guns, she is a brawler, and she will use it by any means to win a fight. Another thing about Atomic Blonde that's really good is how it digests humour. So a lot of your humour is given by David Percival, who is, like I said, a bit feral. He's a bit noir there. Uh, but because of that, you're, you're just watching him like, oh, what's he going to do next? This guy's pure hilarious. Like He's a spy, but he's a very, very different kind of spy. He's He doesn't play by conventional rules, which most spies shouldn't. But Charlie's Theron does play by the sort of she's she's doing it on the sort of I'm going to walk about and I'm going to investigate things. Whereas when you see Percival, Percival's the man of action. Yeah, you know, he's gone and fighting folk and interrogating folk and stuff like this. So they're two very different characters, but they're two very different characters that actually have a good. She doesn't want anything really to do with him, but he kind of he's a bit of a ball. He likes her, you know what I mean, like that kind of thing. And. Yeah, that's 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 where that's where we are. Like in terms of the action sequences, I can't genuinely fault them. I think they're great. You know, like I think it's completely different to you know what you would usually expect. Yeah. And the fact that you see her character tire out makes her that bit more human. But she's fighting because she has to. I love that. You know, this woman is a survivor. She's been through everything, and she is gonna kick balls. Do you know what I mean? Like that's basically her mandate. And arguably. You shouldn't have liked her, but you do. So, uh, talking about the kind of gun scenes and stuff, obviously, those are very practical effects. You can't really do anything major with them. But in all, what's the special effects like? Is there big explosions, or Actually, is it just mostly gun f- uh, guns you, you, for your special you, you, effects? You get your odd wee, you get your odd wee things and stuff like that. But a lot of it's practical. Good, good, good. I, I love I think, practical effects. I think a lot of the gunshot effects when people get shot are special effects. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's not yeah, yeah. actual blood splatter coming oh, from oh, like a blood oh, pack well, in the back of the head. Well, you never, well, you never know. Something actually. it's happened. Uh, it's, it happened. Is, yeah. it's happened. But I think they they seem more special effect to me, um, from what I'd seen. Um, genuinely, there is when they try to create the sort of landscape of you know Berlin. Um, when they're trying to get spy yeah. class sort of out, um, that that is probably the only thing that looks a bit noticeable. Cause yeah, it's, yeah. You know, it, they obviously didn't have that many people there. Like for the close-ups and stuff, they did have people, but like in the actual landscape shot, traveling from the sky all the way down to the streets of Berlin, yeah, you know, this is expected. But by this point in the film, you're not really. You're not really noticing Good. it, and I didn't. It didn't take me out of it because I'm just sitting watching it for what it is. Um, and there's lovely side characters, you know, who 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 help her out. And I won't, I won't, I won't ruin it. But there is a bit that I love, and in, in the trailer you see it's the umbrella scene. Basically, that is Charlize Theron's character. Not that's that bit is orchestrated by her because there's only one person in Germany that she trusts. And, like, she orchestrated that because she felt one of the spies would betray her. And she was right to assume that, but it's great how that whole scene's orchestrated because, like, the character who did do it is just sitting there like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, he, they know, do you know what I mean? Like, they just know. And 
the thing that's interesting about it is you'll be surprised by who it is. I genuinely okay. was sitting there like, oh, this is getting me gone. Like, it, it's, it's, my kind, get you excited? it's my kind of spy film. It's no your James Bond. You know what I mean? It's no like... So it's a modern kind of oh, it's, 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 fun it's, movie. I would say it's fun. I, I see why people compare it to John Wick. I see why people compare it to John Wick because it is, to me, stemmed from the brainchild. That is John Wick. It came from a director who was part of that and wanted to make something similar. Yeah. And I don't see a problem with that. I really, really don't. I think that how they portray it is completely different. And because it's a strong female lead, you know, with strong morals as to why she's doing what she's doing, I think that's great. The neon colour, see if the film didn't have the neon colour, people would not be comparing it to John Wick. It's because of this neon aesthetic. But I'm telling you, don't change it because it's absolutely amazing. See this neon thing that we're doing with films the new? It's a great aesthetic and it works. It's just great. Uh, I'll go into uh, detail about the, the little uh, lesbian scene. Oh, ho, ho, you've got me interested. It's in the trailer, uh, yes. lesbian scene. Just a wee bit of it. Very graphic. Well, not very, very, not so graphic that people would be like, oh my God, like, get your fingers out of her like it was um <laughs> it was actually it, it, it's actually a really nice scene were you not put off by it no no because it felt it didn't feel forced it's actually these two characters who just don't belong in that job anymore and they're just venting their frustrations and through sex and it just feels like they bond through that and they form a kind of relationship through that because it's like, you know, it's the most intimate thing you can do. Even if you've done it as like a one night stand, it's still intimate, you know. And that's that. It, it just it didn't feel forced. It didn't feel to me like it was just there for sex appeal. And it's a spy movie, and sex has to be there. It genuinely felt like the, the two characters genuinely just needed it out of their system. And it is quite an intense scene. You know, it's filled with neon pinks and blues, and it's it's. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it's gorgeous to watch. Oh. Like, it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. The whole film, I think, is gorgeous. It's Berlin is grey and dead and miserable, but the colours add to it. They add layers to it, and I like that. Uh, so yeah, I think it's great. The soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Let's get on to one of the. I would say biggest selling points. So the, the, the film quite charismatically when it, so basically in the trailer you find out that um the the, the, the male spy who Theron's character's after is dead. <laughs> you get that for the trailer, that's why yeah. she's going. And basically what happens is she it, that's how the film kinda opens. It opens up with him trying to escape from who was killing him. Yeah. And there's this great cover by a, a band called Health, uh, done done a quite a good, few good tunes themselves. Uh, they done the the sort of theme song for Max Payne three when it came out. Yeah, um, Health done a cover of Blue Monday, and it's a very synth heavy Blue Monday, and it's just it's just nice, you know what I mean? It's it's just spawn a lot of German music, of course, you know, sort of. You know, you know, kind of filling in the background, a lot of diegetic, non diegetics. There was one song, however, that you knew I was gone for. Oh, James, I wonder what song I'm this big, could be. As you know, I'm a big Marilyn Manson fan. No and, uh, way. <laughs> you don't say. And Marilyn Manson and Tyler Bates done a cover of Stigmata by Ministry. Now, because I know that Marilyn Manson's <laughs> version of Stigmata was not out. When the Berlin Wall was coming down, um, there's a bit in a club where it's played diegetically, so it's played through the speakers and it's made. It goes from like this big intense scene to kind of fade and as if it's in the club that they're in. And that, that, I suppose that's the only thing that really took me out of it is because I'm like, I know that song would never have been played in a club back then. But again, like I would say, it is a film. It's yes. made to entertain. If it succeeds in its job to entertain. Brilliant. I'm not going to judge it on how, what its choice of music was. I believe I'm a I'm a big believer in cinema magic. I believe that we should go back to the days where you know we could be convinced. We could switch our brains off at a film and just go, "That's great." You know, I'll, I'll always advocate that. And Atomic Blonde is one of the films you can't quite switch your brain off if you want to watch it 
intelligently yeah. and pick everything up and try and figure out who the bastard is yourself. But it's so, so, so interesting. And I love it. And it's definitely one of those things where you could just, you know, switch off. John Wick is a switch off movie. Switch off and watch the oh action. Yeah. You know. Hobo with a shotgun. Atomic well. Blonde, you have to kind of be a bit switched on, but be open to what's going on. And I would honestly, like, I'd, 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 I, I love it. it. It's honestly, like, it's hard for me to go to a cinema now and say, I love that. Like, I, I like most things I see in the cinema because, you know, I'm a big cinema goer. But Atomic Bond, like, I was so excited for it and it did not disappoint me. Um, so a lot of people do, uh, do complain about certain things about it, just complain that it's a bit too much like John Wick, but I think it's completely different. From what I've described, I would hope I would be explaining to you that yeah, it seems different. Yeah, it seems... John Wick... There's some bits... Here's the thing, you've, you've got a story of... Of a... Like a secret agent, a hitman, assassin kind of thing. You know, it's... It is going to seem similar, so, you know... It's, it's more... It is more... It feels like more Cold War. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it feels like. It feels like no one's really talking to each other, but everybody's trying to stab each other in the back. It captures that so well. And I think, genuinely, when I see the resemblances to John Wick, you could try and tell me that Charlize Theron was John Wick's mum. And I'd believe it. <laughs> Do you yeah. know what I mean? That's the kind of thing I'm trying to get at here. And I see the points, but again, aesthetically, it's only the aesthetic choice, like the neon, the the, the use of colour, the use of certain fight scenes. But again, if you want to, if you want to draw the differences, John Wick can be a brawler, but ultimately he's more of a gunslinger. He is. Yeah. And he can fight. But oh, you can fight like fuck, but he has more it, of a it, it does rely more on guns. Yeah, and you know, Atomic Blonde's character effectively is more of a hand-to-hand brawler. She does use guns, but she's she she'll use her hands if she can. She'll use anything she can, and that 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 differentiates them. You know, loads of things differentiate them. So overall, it has its faults. Yeah, and I would criticize it because. As from one of the directors, John Wick, people are going to look at it and go, this is just a, a rip-off of John Wick with a woman lead. But let me tell you, she nails it. Charlize Theron nails it. James McAvoy nails it. Like, again, every actor in this, I think, really does a good job. So ultimately, uh, you know, if you want me to rate it... Yeah, I'll of course want you to rate it. I, I'd, I'd easily give it four stars. Easily. Ooh, out of ten. No, four out of five stars. If we're doing films, proper films, modern films, yeah. you want to get out of ten? Yeah, out of ten. Come on, we we review everything. We're doing out of ten all this time. Why yeah, you if, we, if, we, if it's not in ten, then oh my god, uh, oh my god, how will I divide? Um, well, it could be a seven or it could be a nine. You know, oh, I give it a nine easily. Oh, an easy nine. Oh, well, there you go then. Easily, because so I suppose that's more of a four point five. Like, you yes, know, you know, easily a nine. I love it. I think it's. Like I say, you can only rate films based on what you think, you know. A lot of reviewers like to jab it down people's throats, like, we shouldn't see this, shouldn't do this. But, you know, everybody likes different things. And I love Atomic Blonde. I, I was sold for the trailer, and I was sold by the soundtrack, and I'm certainly sold by the film as a whole. You know, I'd buy it and watch it to death. It's fantastic. It, you know, the acting is great. Charlize Theron plays an incredible character who will shock you at times and will make you laugh at times and can just convey so many emotions just in this plain deadpan attitude that she's just had enough of life and you can tell. Uh, James McAvoy again, can be a bit annoying, but plays a really good character. You know, um, everybody involved in the film who plays a major role is good at what they do, I personally think. Uh, The story, top notch. You know, you cannot compare the story to John Wick. Completely different story. You know, it's it's it is, if you want a film about proper spies, espionage, no knowing what's going to happen, no knowing who's going to stab who in the back, Atomic Blonde does that. You know, and you need to see it to see if you do. I'd like to know if you agreed with me. Yeah. Um, but that's what I personally think, and I love it. I think it's a great film, and I totally would encourage anybody to go see it. Nice, well done, well done. Well, of course, you. W- that's the thing. Movies 
how, how many times have we heard that, that people, oh, I'll just watch it on this, I'll just stream it and whatever, and, you know, like, cinema is almost like a dying, a dying breed almost, you know, it, I but it's, it's... I wouldn't say it's dying, I mean, it's like, it's like the reason why we would do reviews, you know, we review shit films, you know what I mean, and we review good films, you know, and it's like, it's one of those ones, like, we never outrightly, unless the film's terrible, we'll oh, never of course. outrightly say to somebody, don't watch it, we, we we always encourage people to watch it, and you always should, because what we well, don't what like, we, what might, we, yeah, exactly, what we think might. is a heap of shit, but um, that's what I'm saying, it's like, you know, some things will always be branded as terrible, some things will always be branded as good, but at the end of the day, if I'm saying something's terrible, that's me saying it's terrible, if you think that you would like the same films I'd like, and you feel that that's the case, listen to what I'm saying, but go see it for yourself, you know? Yeah, exactly. But so on that note, I think, yeah. you know, that's all I can really say about it. I, I, it's great. Yeah, without it. giving too much away. Take your mum, take your gran. I don't think you take your take gran, your especially son. with the lesbian scene that you mentioned. Take your underage son. <laughs> yeah, well. What's it? I mean, it's 15. 15? 15. It's 15. Mm. So it's not too raunchy. For fuck's sake. But yes. on that note, we hope you enjoyed this review. We'll hopefully do more of them. Yes, uh, well that's the thing, it's a fresh movie, so wanted to get a we've little reviewing. A lot of, we've reviewed a lot of old films, so we'll be re- reviewing a lot of fresh ones in the yes. future. Uh, and yeah, absolutely, you know, like like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, you know, you can catch all of our previous work on SoundCloud, the Mac Daddy home of Glaswegian Gene Geeks, or iTunes, or YouTube. Expect a lot of YouTube, regular YouTube content very, yes. very soon. And of course... Yeah, before we even go... Use our code Glaswegian Geeks at Rip to Paro. You know, get a t-shirt, this a hoodie. Amazing new t-shirt, Iron Stitch. Iron 2.0. Stitch. Oh it's no, no, no! I'm on about the one that came out on Thursday, the uh, Hunters slash Heroes one. You've got a circle assault saying Hunters with a salt shaker, kind of like the Heroes logo. Mm-hmm. Uh, are we yeah. Heroes Supernatural crossover? I'm all about that. But stuff. stitching an Iron Man costume, I'm all for that. Mm, yeah, okay. Again, okay. each to their own. Yes. Use Glaswegian Geeks at the checkout. Save yourself. Yes, all one out. word. All one word, remember? In Glaswegian caps. Geeks. In caps. Remember. Yes, get a wee 10% off. Because we put the whole thing in caps because we're compensating. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little uh, fly review. This ditty. And. Ex- exactly what James said. Go and see it. I'm sure I'll be going to see it. Not for the lesbian scene, but for the uh, action. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. There's not a lot of good movies out or movies I'd want to see. And hearing the soundtrack and seeing the trailer intrigued me. So it, it seems like something I'd want to see. So I'll definitely be trying to get around to seeing it as soon as possible. It feels like a fresh sort of, you know like an indie film tries to be like really, yeah, yeah, yeah like really sneaky and tries to catch you behind your back well Atomic Blonde's an action film that does that and that's quite rare, yeah. me, if you ask me so, again to me it feels fresh but it's the kind of film I've been craving for a while you know, you get that craving for a certain film and then you get it but yeah, that's all I can really say okay, so on that note geek out geek out <laughs>